All right, hi, it's Tom from Durham Precious Metals. I think it's about high time I put up something new on YouTube, hopefully something that can help out. Um, try to focus on new customers coming into the store. I think that's where uh, people have the most difficulty. And uh, this is a conversation that I often have with new people that are just thinking about getting started uh, when they come in. So I thought it would be nicer to have this conversation in the comfort of your own home where there isn't any sales pressure at the window. And uh, maybe it'll help you... Uh, when you do come in to visit us. And this conversation goes like this. Um, obviously, people that have come into the store have some previous knowledge. I mean, people don't just wander into our store wondering what we do and invest in precious metals. Usually, there's some background. Uh, they've been investigating online, surfing Google and YouTube and getting all these different opinions. And I think what happens is... is they know that um, this is something they want to do, but they're not sure because there's so many different confusing messages that are coming from the online community. And uh, that's good and bad. And, and uh, the good of it is, is, yeah, there's a diversity of opinions because there's a diversity of people and everybody has their own sort of take on what's right for them. So their opinion is going to be geared to them. Um, everybody's financial situation is different. Everybody's at a different stage in their life. Uh, everybody's got different investments already. So, yes, your reasons are going to be different. Now, that being said, uh, one of the common themes that I see uh, in the online community, in the silver community, is this idea that silver is going to go into. And I'm going to strictly just talk about silver now. Not that gold isn't different, but silver seems to be the focus, and that's where most of the business is right now. So we'll just say silver. But I'm talking about both precious metals. So uh, the... A common theme is that silver is going to go into, you know, triple digits, hundred plus dollars an ounce. And that the reason to invest in it is that alone. Uh, we're going to buy it at, you know, somewhat under, it's around $23, $24 an ounce now. We're going to capitalize on that when it goes to triple digits and we're going to be rich. I guess there's nothing wrong with that, but um, I have a bit of an axe to grind with that premise simply because I think it's a bad foundation. And that's the kind of the title of this particular talk is uh, foundations, the proper foundations for investing in silver. And uh, again, just my opinion, uh, you know, take it with a grain of salt, but uh, at least have a listen and hear me out. So what I what I believe is that whenever we start with a, a an improper premise, i.e., you know, that silver is going to go to $100 an ounce, and that's the reason to do it, I think we set ourselves up for um, disappointment because what if it doesn't go to 100? What if it doesn't go to 100 in the time frame that you think it's going to? What if uh, you're 20 and you've got lots of years ahead of you? What if you're 70 and maybe don't, you know? Uh, it's going to give a, a, a sort of a skewed um, perception of of what should what the outcome should be. And I think expectation bias is a dangerous thing. If we start with a certain expectation in mind and that expectation is not met, and that's our premise for doing that thing in the first place, our, all of our decisions going forward are going to be based on a flawed premise and are probably not going to be sound decisions. So if we start with a sound decision, and again, this is just my opinion. So when I say a sound decision, hey, just my opinion. But think about it. And uh, here goes. I think the proper premise for starting investing in silver and gold is as a sa savings vehicle. Now, I know that's not, it doesn't have a lot of pizzazz and isn't very exciting, but we're talking about finance here. And finance is a, a foundational premise to our life, our survival. Everything we do revolves around money. And there's just not enough proper education about money. We're not taught it in our educational system at in our schools it's it's uh so we're subject to the whims of people out there that all have a different agenda now i i'm a i'm a business owner i sell gold and silver so obviously i have a bias as well but hear me out this is what i think is is the right foundation um as a savings vehicle um uh, and, and a long-term perspective so as a savings vehicle think of it this way if you have cash naturally you know human beings what we <laughs> The human nature being what it is, um, we tend to spend our cash. That's what it's there for. Cash, spend, cash, spend. Um, now, you could you could keep your savings in cash. You could keep it in a bank. I mean, I don't know what incentive there is to keep it in a savings account anymore. There's 
no incentive like there was when, when I was young. You can make 4% a year on a savings account. Now you can barely make 0.4%. It's, uh, it's, there's just no incentive there. And I think that has sort of bled over into an anti-savings mentality in the public. So if you, if you look at silver as, as a way to just park your cash somewhere, um, then it creates this arm's length um, buffer between you and just spending the money quickly. You convert a couple hundred bucks into a 10-ounce bar. You now have a 10-ounce bar. Well, you can't take that 10-ounce bar down to Walmart and spend it, right? So you have to now make another decision to bring it back into our store, somebody else's store, sell it privately, get the cash back, and then go and spend it. So it just creates that buffer, slows down the process uh, of spending it. Like I said, that doesn't sound very exciting, but hey, when you look at the the facts and figures nowadays on debt ratios in Canada. I mean, the average household is $1.6 in debt for every dollar in income. It's not very good. So if you can get on the other side of that where you actually don't have debt and have some savings, wow, that puts you way ahead of, you know, uh, the average person in the world. And uh, unfortunately, that is, uh, that is, I mean, if the average person drives the market and the and the market is you know setting prices for that average person if you can be somewhat ahead of that average person you have more buying power you have a better position in that market it's unfortunate for those who don't but we're here to talk about you and and getting you in a better position financially so starting from that that looking at it as a savings vehicle is very important now Let's say that it does go to triple digits. Well, then that changes things. Now you have some different decisions to make. But if you start with the savings premise, your expectations are going to be far more grounded than if you start with uh, an expectation of an outcome that may never happen. Now, if now if it does happen again, if it goes to 100 or 200 or whatever, now you, now the game changes. You have some different decisions to make. You might want to pull out some of uh, of uh, what you've invested and. In. And now you're, you know, you're playing with your gains in the market. You pull out your initial investment. You know, that's a common premise that a lot of finance people teach. And nothing wrong with that. That, that may be one approach. But at least if that doesn't happen, now you, uh, you have a more grounded uh, perspective on what to do going forward. So that's the, the main thing I want to drive is that and, and taking a long-term approach. Those are tried and true principles that have always existed in investing and I don't think that changes just because we live in a different world the world of the internet and the world of information I don't I don't think that anything anything that's traditional in terms of money ever goes away uh, I think a right premise back in the day is a right premise now and a right premise is savings and a long-term approach so I hope that helps uh, I'm going to keep this short I think the next thing I want to talk about um is, uh, I mean, I did a previous previous video, sorry, on what to buy, and it came across a little weak. I mean, I'm still practicing it, getting good at the microphone here and imparting uh, what I really want to get across when I'm talking. It's a little bit hard off the cuff, and I'm not very good at scripting, so these are going to be unscripted videos, and hopefully they'll, they'll uh, get the point I want to make across. So the next video, we're going to talk about... Um, what bullion to buy and get into a little bit more details about that. So anyway, thanks. Have a nice day. See you on the next video.